House officials invited Trump's social media allies to sit in the Rose Garden. But after the event was over, West Wing aides did nothing when those social media figures began to verbally abuse reporters who were trying to do their jobs. A good snapshot of how the press is treated by the White House. Hey folks, Drone Tech here once again to show you that our fourth estate has become nothing more than a political organization for the Democrat Party. Before we get to that, I just want to give a quick shout out to BottomlessCoffee007.com. This Tide podcast focuses on God, family, and politics. Head on over to their website and check them out on iTunes. If you have a website or a podcast and you'd like me to give a shout out, simply make a purchase on ribd.com forward slash drone tech and use the promo code drone tech to get 20% off. Send me the receipt and I'll give you a shout out. Thanks. The media is predictably demonizing the attendees of Trump's social media summit with MSNBC calling it a coalition of dirty tricksters. With that mindset going in, it's not at all surprising what took place at the White House Rose Garden. When I first read about this incident and then saw the video, I knew immediately that the media would purposely leave out key details just so they could smear Trump and conservatives. And they didn't disappoint. The first piece of misinformation that I saw came from the left-wing news clip site Mediaite.com with the headline, quote, Freak Show, Sebastian Gorka screams at CNN's Brian Karam after White House social media summit. You're a punk. That's really strange that they would lead with that headline, seeing as how anybody who saw that video saw that it was CNN's Brian Karam that began shouting at the social media attendees, saying that they were eager for demonic possession. This is a group of people that are eager for demonic possession. That's totally something that you would expect to hear from a stoic, just the facts journalist, right? It was only after Karam's outburst that Gorka stepped in to mock the idea that this guy thinks he's a real journalist. After Gorka said his piece, Karam took it further and implied that he wanted to take Gorka out back and fight him, saying, hey, come on over here and talk to me, brother. We can go outside and have a long conversation. And that's when Gorka came up and put this little punk in his place. You are a punk. You're not a journalist. You're a punk. Some people are speculating that Karam and Acosta himself were really butthurt about being seated at the back rows instead of at the front rows where all the social media attendees were sitting. A scene at the White House Rose Garden. A White House press in the back. Trump social media allies in the front rows. I think you could actually make the argument that Acosta started this entire incident by whining that he wasn't in the front rows. Looking at Karam's Twitter page is like looking at an alternate timeline because of course the video that he's providing is edited to omit his part in the entire incident. Hilariously, Project Veritas's James O'Keefe actually stepped in and tried to defuse the situation telling Karam that hey I'm on the same team as you I just want you to do your job only to be rejected and arrogantly told, quote, when you have a staff of people that verify your facts, then you can call yourself a reporter. You have an opinion. Label yourself as an opinion. <laughs> Here we go again with the complete and utter lack of self-awareness. These activists pretending to be journalists are either straight up pathological liars or they live in such a contained bubble that they think that their opinions are fact by virtue of them having the opinion. Either way, it's scary to think these people are considered reliable or trustworthy by millions of Americans. That's all I have for you today. Make sure to head on over to Teespring and check out our new Shake the Dems 2020 t-shirts. Have a great weekend.